Section 459 of the Social Security Act, if what you want to call that. Unfortunately, the hate channel, the copy channel, is giving false information. If you read Section 459, where he states on his show that they can garnish your wages just like that. Well, Section 459 pertains to child support and spousal or alimony. That's all it applies to. Why don't you have your readers read that part? See, it's like this. You can make a judgment on anybody. But there's no way of getting to your money. The person making a judgment on it gets zero. Zip crickets. That's it. And if your bank account is also under somebody else's name, they can't take that money either. But let me let me rehash this whole thing so people understand what's going on. Old news is being rehashed again by the copycat channel, okay? Franks loses his case in Hawaii. Yeah, it's a default. It's a default. Correct. Default. Okay. Here's how it works. If somebody is trying to garnish you and it's a civil lawsuit they're trying to garnish you. They make a judgment. If anything, it goes on your record, so you got a judgment. So, if you're in the country and you buy a house or something like that, if you try to sell the house, they can go after it. Simple as that. I owed 18000 on an old car. It actually probably started off at about five. So when I sold my house, they had to instantly withdraw out of my collected funds about $18,000. That's how it works. Now, in a case like this, a civil case, uh, where your main income is going to be your retirement, Social Security. And here's how it works to make it clear. They don't read everything under Section 40, 459 that they're talking about on there. So I thought I'd correct them, because they're so wrong. <laughs> um, they just want to make things look grim and gray for me. It just doesn't work. Nothing's ever worked with anybody out here. If you bother to follow that information, you'll see that here's the way it works. They could do a garnishment attempt to your bank. Let's say you're on Social Security. Okay, if you had a job, let's see if you had a job. Because I had a credit card problem one time, and they did go into my uh, account at work. They did take it out of my paycheck, but the way it works like this. Number one, my funds are directly deposited. It's a big difference whether you said to get a check or directly deposited. That makes a big difference on how or if somebody could garnish your wages as far as Social Security. Two, uh, child support and spousal support is a definite. And federal taxes owed. Those are the three right there. Now, if you have a Social Security account, here's how it works. And I've researched this, and I've researched this, and I've researched this. And they're still coming up with the same information, both from the bank manager, their legal department, and from what I read on the internet. It's a federal law that's been in effect, and along with the banking institutions, all of them, that the only way they could touch your money in the bank, they could go through the formality of telling the bank, hey, you know, uh, we want to take some money out of this bank account. It doesn't work that easy. Because how it works is that you have a two-month protect... Even if they could get into your bank account, you have a two-month protection period. That means uh, you get your check. And of course, the money's going to be out in about a week, right? You're going to withdraw all the money. There's not going to be anything left to take out. But you are protected for two months. Two months. If you have anything left over in your account, for example... If you want to do a savings, anything beyond what you get for Social Security, oh yeah, they could skim that off the top right easily. Mm -hmm. No problem with that. That would be true. But you're given a two-month protection period.